How is it going everybody? You're watching Danibal Tech and today I'm going to show you the best iOS 13 features and changes. So there's a lot to cover so let's go ahead and get started. So of course I have to start with dark mode. So uh, dark mode is probably the main feature on iOS 13. At least there was so much hype about it and actually it is so so good. So if you don't know dark mode, if you just enable it, just by enable it, it's going to change uh, your, your design, it's going to change the user interface to black, to dark. And it's if it's so good look at that like and bl it blends in so perfectly with iOS uh, and of course with the hardware as well you pretty much don't see the notch anymore or anything like that I just love the new look it looks perfect and I love it and the best part of course um, uh, it translates to all other Apple native apps so if you open mail for example same story here everything is dark I'm not gonna show a lot of apps because throughout this video we're gonna see a lot of different apps so you guys can take a look as I'm going all right so um, uh, since I'm talking about dark mode of course I have to talk about wallpapers as well uh, so right here if we scroll down and go to wallpaper in our settings uh, we have the we have a few new wallpapers so if I go to stills right here uh, we can see that we have four new ones so the orange slash uh, red blue green and uh, white and dark and gray and let me show you how that works so um, these wallpapers they're actually dynamic so I'm here uh, in dark mode is enabled okay so as you guys can see it is pretty dark but if I go here and disable dark mode we have this uh, shortcut right here so we pull down command center and we open and then we tap on brightness and then we change the appearance to light as you guys can see uh, everything goes back uh, to light as you guys are probably seeing right now everything is normally normally white as a normal iOS interface is in the wallpaper changes to this white tone as well so we change this to orange and, and slightly uh, lighter red and purple so that's very interesting and same thing with the other ones I showed you before next I want to show you the new reminders app so let me show let me put it back here in dark mode because of course I want to show this video everything in dark mode so let me open the reminders app and as you guys can see the reminders app is completely different now uh, we have a completely new user interface new layouts and new buttons so I'm gonna show you uh, a little bit about the reminders app the new features because I think it's worth it so right here we have these four big buttons so today of course you're gonna see what you have today if you go to scheduled uh, we're gonna see all your reminders separated by date so uh, the earliest incomplete reminder I have and then it's gonna go from Tuesday yesterday today tomorrow and so on so it's gonna go forward in time so you can see the scheduled uh, here you have all so is um, all my reminders separ separated by my list so my lists I'm gonna show you my list in a second and here we have flagged and let me show you how flag works so if I go ahead and I go to today for example and I get this app right here and then I flag it as you guys can see it's gonna be flagged right there and at the same time we're gonna have it right here in flag now we have one and it is right here in flag so it's a very interesting way a nice way to separate and to make it more highlighted so really the important ones are gonna be right here now talking about lists we have a new interface here as well first of all we have the ability to create groups so I have this group which includes two lists so that's interesting we have an, and we have two more lists down here uh, the interesting part is we can change obviously the name but we can also change the colors and the icons let me show you how that works if I go ahead and edit here and if I go to this information button I can change the name for example and then I can change the color and of course I can also change if I hit done I have to go back again probably it's just a bug from iOS 13 and then I can change the icon so I can change for example to, to this running guy right here and then it's very interesting because I can not only change the name but the color and the icon which is gonna make much easier for us to have a look here and understand much better our reminders list and also still talking about reminders the last thing if I go here on my on a normal reminder for example and if I tap on it we have these options right there so we have the option to change uh, when is gonna actually uh, uh, alarm so today tomorrow next weekend or if it's custom you know, in my case it's custom of course uh, then we have location so it's interesting arriving home arriving at work getting in my car uh, we have the option to flag it so again flagging it and we also have the option to add 
uh, a photo, for example. So that's very interesting as well because you can add much more information to your reminders. So I think that this new implementation with the Reminders app make it so much more powerful. Now I wanna talk about Safari because the Safari app is so much more powerful. It's such a powerful browser right now. Uh, this was talked about a lot in WWDC, but only regarding iPad, iPad OS, but actually all the features, all the features that make Safari a full web browser on the iPad are here in the iPhone as well. Let me show you what I mean. So uh, if I go ahead and I go to youtube.com, for example, and as you guys can see, it's gonna automatically load the mobile version. That's normal, it always opens the mobile version, but now you have the option just to tap on these two A's right here at the top, and we can change to request desktop website. If we just tap here, as you guys can see, it will automatically load the desktop version, so the full desktop site, which is very, very nice. And we also have a few more customizations here. If we go again on AA and then website settings, we have the option to, for example, always request a desktop website on youtube.com. So that's interesting because you don't have to every time manually do that. And also use Reader, Reader automatically if you want, for example. If you open a news website, you have this on, it's always gonna go ahead and show you with the Reader automatically. So that's very, very nice. And also allow YouTube to access camera, microphone, location. You have these options right there. So that's very cool, very nice customization. But what I think the best feature on Safari is, is actually down downloads because in iOS 13 you can actually download anything from the internet right here on your iPhone. You can actually do normal downloads. This is so, so amazing. Let me show you this in action. So as you guys can see, I'm on youtube.com right here on the website, and then I can just normally download a video, for example. I'm, I'm, I'm here on my list of videos from my own channel, so I can just go ahead and download one. For example, if I just tap on the arrow right there, you see download MP4, uh, and before you just couldn't download. If you tap here, it wouldn't, it wouldn't download, but now, just wait a second and then it asks if you want to download this video and then I can just hit download and then as you guys can see it goes automatically right there to the top right corner right there and then you can manage your download so it's downloading as you guys can see look at that so amazing so now we can do downloads and as I said you can download absolutely any file it works on any file and then you just tap on the little find icon right there and then we're gonna open our iCloud Drive, our files, because it's gonna automatically download here. So I had other videos because of course I tested before, and then all my videos are here, all my downloads are here, straight right here on our files app. So if you go to your files, and then uh, you go to downloads, now you have a download folder in your iPhone downloading straight from Safari. This is unbelievable, I just love it. Now I wanna show you a few new things in Messages. So if we open the Messages app, uh, first thing I wanna show you is Apple is trying to make uh, iMessage like a social media app like WhatsApp or something like that. And I say that because now you have a profile. So uh, if you go ahead and tap on the three dots right there at the top, and then you have the option to edit name and photo. So now you have this profile page, it's very simple, but it's a profile page with your photo, your name, uh, and you, you have the option to share name and photo to contacts only, always ask or anyone. So if it, it's, it's almost like WhatsApp really, which uh, if somebody just has my number or something or my email, they can actually see a, few, a, a little bit of information about myself. So that's pretty interesting. I like this new implementation. And also since we're here in messages, I'm gonna talk about Memoji a little bit because you have a few changes as well. So uh, first of all, if I open my Memoji right there, you can see that, of course, it tracks my face the same way, uh, just works perfectly. But now we have a few more uh, options to customize. So, for example, if we go to ears, we have piercings and things like that. We have many more options. We have more options regarding hair, regarding makeup and things like that. So if you like Memoji and you just didn't think uh, it wasn't it didn't look like you before, it probably will look like you a little bit better now. And also we have something that I really like, which are the stickers. So we have the Memoji stickers, which are nice. You can add any Memoji sticker just by tapping on it. So it's gonna automatically have your face and it's gonna create stickers based on your face. So this is like my Memoji, for example. So this is very nice and you can not only send on iMessage, but you can send this on WhatsApp, Instagram, and other social media apps as well. Because the Memoji stickers, will will go in your keyboard. So let me show you what I mean. So if I go ahead and open my emojis and I scroll left, as you guys can see, uh, right after you're frequently used, you're gonna see 
your stickers. So that's very nice. And it, it, it not only stays here in your iMessage, as I mentioned, you can use them in other apps as well. So this is very cool. And since we have our keyboard right here, of course, I'm going to show you the new feature called Swipe, uh, which native is now natively supported. So you can just swipe on your keyboard to actually type. So you don't have to touch type. You can ju just swipe and you don't have to enable anything. It is just enabled just in iOS 13. So I'm not really good at this. So I'm going to say like testing like new uh, feature so like I'm not really good at this but again I think it's very nice uh, and as I said you don't have to enable anything or anything like that so it's pretty useful and if you enjoy gesture typing you're gonna love this now I want to show you something about location services that I just love so if I open my maps right there um, the first thing you're gonna see on any new app that is requiring to use your location is this new menu right here. You have the option to uh, allow location while using the app. This is a normal option, we always had that. We have the option to don't allow, of course, and we have the option to allow once, which is the new feature that I just love. Because let's say you are opening an app like weather or something, or even this maps, and you want you to have your location services on, but you don't want the, the app to always be tracking you, like using your battery and things like that. So you can just allow once and it's going to track you for that period of period of time while you're using the app and then it's not going to track you anymore so i think this is very very cool